In this video, we will talk about infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis is a disease of the endocardial layer of the heart, also including the heart valves. And so the endocar endocardium is the innermost layer of the heart. When it affects the valves, it most often affects the aortic and mitral valves. And there's approximately 40 to 50,000 new cases per year. Common risk factors include already having a prosthetic valve, being on hemodialysis, or being an IV drug user. Um, the common clinic, clinical manifestations for someone with infective endocarditis include fever, chills, weakness, malaise, fatigue, um, and anorexia. Um, sometimes you might see also some vascular manifestations, which are splinter hemorrhages in the nail beds, petechiae, ulcer nodes on the fingertips or toes, Janesway lesions on the pads of the fingertips, or Roth, Roth spots. Assessment-wise, you might see new or worsening systolic murmurs in patients. Patients may also present with heart failure, or um, they may have um, manifestations secondary to septic embolisms, so you might see um, clots in the central nervous system, extremities, spleen, or kidneys. So when someone um, is infected with endocarditis, the most common organisms are going to be bacterial, and that's going to be strep Streptococcus aureus. That's the most common bacteria. And what will happen is patients will develop these vegetations. And these uh, vegetations that are shown here, they adhere to the valve surface or the endocardium, and that's what can cause um, these microembolisms or larger clots to break off from these tiny um, areas of, of uh, vegetation that are on there. And those move into the systemic system. Uh, when they develop the infection, it can also spread and damage the valves. It can cause dysrhythmias, valve function. It can also cause heart failure, sepsis, and heart block. Diagnostic criteria includes that a person has at least two major criteria, meaning that they need to have um, two of the following, either positive blood culture, evidence of endocardial involvement, or new valvular vegetations are found when they do an echocardiogram. So when we're managing this, we're going to want to figure out the organism um, because most of it is usually bacteria. You would expect them to be on IV antibiotics, and that's usually long-term. We're talking 6, 12, uh, maybe even longer weeks. If it is fungal or viral, um, they will be treated with antivirals or antifungals, but that is much harder to cure. We will continue to check blood cultures to uh, make sure that the bacteria is being eradicated. In some cases, patients will need to have their valves replaced because there's been so much damage to the valve. Antipyretics will help with the fever. Fluid and rest will also be very important uh, for this patient. So we're going to have to do some patient teaching. We're going to have them make sure to monitor for temperature, looking for any of those signs and symptoms, signs and symptoms of complication. Um, for example, any of those microembolisms or if a clot were to travel and let's say they have a splenic or liver clot. They should know uh, how they probably contracted infective endocarditis and how they can reduce their risk for becoming reinfected. Uh, Follow-up care will be extremely important. They're going to want to continue to be followed till they can determine that they no longer le need antibiotic therapy, nutrition, treatment, um, of any infections, prompt treatment will be very import important, knowing signs and symptoms of recurrent infection. And then they'll need to know um, that they may need to have prophylactic antibiotic therapy in the future. So if infective endocarditis, um, if they've had it, and or it definitely involves their damage to their valves, these patients will need to have prophylactic antibiotic treatment when they have um, invasive procedures in the future. So for example, certain dental procedures, um, if they have any type of incision in the respiratory tract, 
surgeries such as tonsillectomy or adenoidectomy, surgical procedures that infect skin, skin structures, muscle, skeletal tissue, any of those, um, they would want to follow up prior to having their procedures to see if they need to take that antibiotic therapy prior to having these procedures. Um, that's kind of the most uh, important things to think about when you are caring for a patient with an infective endocarditis.